Hi, I'm Coach Lucas, and this is The Back Giant. First thing before we do the Giants is we need to perfect the swing. Owen here is going to start his swings from a jam cast. That's where the toes lift up, down, and then push away into the next swing. Before we even can consider the Giant, the gymnasts have consistent swings at or above bar height. What we're looking for is the specific shapes to be clear and defined at the bottom of the bar. We can see the hollow shape, open, hollow. This is called a tap. Hollow, open, hollow. Perfect. Once we've seen the swings get a little bit bigger on the strap bar to the point of 45 degrees, it's now important to look at the bail. The bail is the part from handstand either forwards or backwards to create the giant swing. For this one, we're going to be doing a backwards giant swing. Owen's going to kick to handstand and what we're looking for is a hollow body shape all the way down into the mat without any change of shape. Go ahead. Perfect. So you can see that from the second he kicks up, his ears are in, his chest is round, and his body is tight. So again, we'll watch one more time as Owen kicks up, his head is in, his body stays in the same shape, and body tension throughout the whole drop. We may know what to do, but we have to be able to identify what not to do. When we look at this, Owen's going to show us a little bit of a common mistake. Where we lead, rather than our toes leading first, our chest drops first, creating an arch shape. The reason why this happens is because the gymnast's head sticks out. As soon as the gymnast's head sticks out, we see right away that the upper thoracic back becomes an arch shape. We end up compensating by trying to arch our hips to feel in balance. So watch one more time, we're going to get Owen to go from an arch where his head is out, and he's going to push up tall with his head coming in to create that nice bail. When the gymnast's head's out, we see this out curve position. As soon as his head comes in, it stretches up tall, aligns his back into the hollow shape, which is perfect for that bail. Awesome. The backswing is relatively safe and easy for the gymnast. They feel comfortable because they can always see where they're going. The problem is when we swing in the front of the swing, the gymnast doesn't know what's behind them. This often leads to piking or closing onto the bar. Because of this, we're going to set up the drill where the gymnast is going to kick up to handstand and fall forwards, mimicking that front swing on the way down. All right, for the next one, our gymnast is now going to take our bales that we did on the floor to the next level. This is where he's going to try to get as close to handstand as possible, but we're not going to let him go over. This allows the gymnast to become comfortable with the feeling of hitting handstand, but falling back down the opposite direction. Perfect. The next one, once our gymnast feels comfortable with hitting that five degrees in handstand, we're going to play around with letting them fall over for a front giant and over for the back giant. So near handstand, near handstand, all the way around. Near handstand, all the way around. Near handstand, all the way around. The purpose of this is to allow the gymnast to develop that confidence of where they are on the bar, as well as to make the shape adjustments required to switch directions. This time, we're gonna get the gymnasts to try it by themselves. So killing a swing, and then over. Kill the swing, over. Kill the swing, over. This is perfect for body control and makes sure that the gymnast is really utilizing the tap angles. With the coach there, it's easy to get the gymnast to handstand. But when the coach is stepping away from the athlete and we see that the athlete is struggling to get to handstand, it's key to note the position of their shoulders, bum, and heels in the alignment over top of the bar. If the gymnast, as seen in the video, is swinging only to a 45 degree angle, but their shoulders are completely open, this is actually preventing them to get their center of mass over top of the bar. To change this, ask the gymnast to close their shoulders ever so slightly to shift the body weight on top of the bar, followed by the bum over top of the shoulders, and then lastly, the heels. This will create a higher backswing and allow for more downswing power for that final giant swing that we're looking for. What we're gonna do now is understand the giant. One of the biggest misconceptions is figuring out the angles. On a high bar, everything happens 180 degrees from the reaction. So when we're doing a giant, the idea is to go from handstand to handstand. In order to get back up to handstand, the tap needs to initiate at the bottom of the swing. So when we start at our diagram, we see the gymnast in that hollow shape that we did on the floor bar. 
hollow, 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 all the way until we're almost at that vertical line. Then the shape change happens directly at vertical. This creates that 180 degree bounce to finish on top of the bar. So then we can see the gymnast go back to hollow, hollow, and then proceed all the way back to handstand. When we look at the angles as not supposed to be done, we see an example here of the gymnast pushing down and back at about a 45 degree angle where they're opening the body. This in turn creates that reaction to happen 180 degrees from that position, 45 degrees in the front. This would not be ideal for giants as the gymnast is not finishing in vertical, but it would be ideal for a skill like a dismount. When we look at this diagram on the right, we see the gymnast pushing 180 degrees backwards, creating a backwards pull on the bar and the reaction opposite of that is a pull forwards on the bar. Again, this won't be good for a dismount or a swing, but might be better off for something like a release move, such as to catch if. What we're gonna have next is the gymnast is gonna do two swings at the desired tap angle, which is below the bar. After the two swings, on the third swing, we're gonna show the first common mistake of the gymnast tapping down and backwards at a 45 degree angle as per a dismount. As you can see, the gymnast finishes 45 degrees in front of the bar, 180 degrees from that tap angle. Great for a dismount, but not ideal for the giant that we're looking for. On the next example, we see the gymnast push 180 degrees backwards away from the bar, and this creates the reaction of the tap pulling them directly in front of the bar. Again, 180 degrees from that initial tap angle. Now let's watch the perfect giant where the gymnast is gonna be tapping below the bar and finishing on top. Once the giants have been perfected on the strap bar, we're now gonna to transition to the real bar. This is gonna be a skill for a future video and it's important not to rush the giants. Giants should be done on straps for months, if not a whole year before the gymnast is ready to transition over to the bar. This ensures correct body position, consistency, and an understanding of the skill. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.